Full disclosure, this interview is completely for me because I'm a huge Fallout fan. Back to the days of Fallout 1, I am a Fallout fiend. So most important question first, are there robots that tell bad jokes and is there a dog meat in the game? There are robots that tell bad jokes. Um, there are a lot of dogs in the wasteland. And that's all I'll say about that. Now you've <laughs> changed the way the companions work in the game. I was I was checking that out. So mm -hmm. talk us through that. We wanted to make sure that the companions were very easy to use. Um, people like companions. They don't like sort of struggling to manage their right, companions. Right. So we introduced a companion wheel. Once someone joins your party, when you interact with them, the default um, option is not to talk to them. It's actually you get a wheel where you can very quickly access their inventory, combat styles, tell them to wait, uh, check out their health, and give them stim packs, stuff like that. And then you can also talk to them. We also made sure that every one of the companions had their own little quest that you can go on. Some of them are very long, some of them are very short, but it makes the uh, characters feel like they have lives of their own, and of course that content is very fun for the players to go through. Now, this is taking place about the same time, give or take a few years, as Fallout 3. So what's the difference in the landscape moving to Vegas? It's about four years later. Um, Vegas, uh, we chose because it is such a strong contrast to the DC wasteland. Um, DC, people sort of view the capital wasteland as that's the heart of America. You know, it's the, the ruin there is, you know, all of our greatest monuments destroyed. Right. Uh, and in Vegas, um, Vegas is sort of a monument to American vice and it's continually reinventing itself. Uh, the casinos, instead of trying to mimic existing casinos, we tried to go for a late 50s, early 60s feel. And so each casino has its own particular identity and style to it. And I, I think players will appreciate that. Now, if you can talk about it, what's the overall concept? I mean, Fallout 3 went back to the tried and true Fallout format of vault opens, out they come. Mm -hmm. How does New Vegas start? New Vegas starts with you being shot in the head twice and dumped in a shallow grave. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's Vegas. Yeah, so you, you actually are a courier. You're not a vault dweller. You're someone who is just carrying a package from the New California Republic to New Vegas and for that package you were shot and dropped in this grave. You don't die and you spend the first half of the game trying to find out who tried to kill you and why they were so interested in what you were carrying. Um, in the process of doing that, you become caught up in the larger conflict, which is the New California Republic fighting against Caesar's Legion and finally the city of New Vegas itself and its citizens trying to remain independent of both groups. So you really become an instrumental player in that conflict and it's up to you to kind of decide uh, the people you want to side with. Now. The, um, the the Fallout 3 was a huge game. It, New Vegas is clearly standalone, but is it that is it that big? Like, is the scope the same? I don't know if it's exactly the same. Um, I think our Vegas itself is is maybe a little bit smaller. Our our wasteland is in some ways a little bit bigger. Oh, okay. So it might kind of even out. Um, I don't know game hours or anything like that, but it's it's a really big area. I don't. I think if you you would have to. You'd have to do a lot of examination to determine if it's bigger or smaller than Fallout 3. Now, any changes to the weaponry, armor, the way uh, your your skills, your perks work, anything like that? Yeah, a lot. Um, so we've overhauled the weapons quite significantly. We changed how the real-time combat works, so we have aim down sights for most weapons now. So it's a little more immersive. Um, we also try to make the responsiveness of the weapons feel a little bit better. We've doubled the number of weapons. Most of the weapons we have are brand new. We actually don't bring all the old Fallout 3 weapons back. Lots of guns, lots of explosives, lots of energy weapons, melee weapons. Melee weapons have their own new special moves now in VATS. So, because a lot of people wanted more to do in VATS with melee. So, you can unlock special moves when you get a high enough skill. Uh, Unarmed as well has new moves. You can unlock uh, uppercuts and crosses. Uh, so there's lots of combat overhaul. Uh, we have got, we got rid of the big gun skill and all the weapons sort of go to different categories. So like the missile launcher and fat man go to explosives, Gatling laser goes to energy. Uh, and then guns is sort of like the catch-all for the minigun, pistols, all that stuff. Um, and then we've changed a lot of stuff about special and stuff like that too, but we've, we've really done a very comprehensive re-evaluation of how the system works. What's your favorite innovation from Fallout 3 to New Vegas? Hmm, let's see. That's a hard question. I think it's probably the companion changes we've made. Okay. Um, because we know people really like the companions and uh, we just wanted to remove some of the uh, clunkiness of it. Last question. Are there more songs in the radio that plays during the game this time? Well, I don't know if we're actually we're actually final final on the song list, but um, I can say that we tried to get a nice blend of sort of um, uh, 50s Rat Pack era stuff as well as some 50s and 40s country music. So uh, there, there are stations that sort of mix them up, and or if you just want to listen to one or another, you can do that too.
Okay, October, Fallout New Vegas is coming. Thanks, Josh. Thank you.